Welcome to the brand new uh, web series, Linux System Administration. Myself, Mansoor Hassan. I'm Solution Architect in Technologic Technologic Solution. Uh, I would like to give you a small introduction about myself. Uh, I have around 14 years of experience working with several technologies. I started uh, my career back in 2007 as a front-end developer. Uh, now it's been a decade that I'm working in the DevOps field. Uh, so, uh, topic of this web series is about Linux system administration. We will explore how uh, and what is uh, Linux, how we can work with Linux, Linux architecture, uh, and lots of things to learn. So, let's begin. Uh, our first topic is about Linux architecture. So first we understand the Linux architecture. Uh, Linux, it's not an operating system. It's actually uh, a kernel. So uh, the uh, Linux operating system is dependent on several uh, items uh, like uh, kernel modules and then kernel system libraries, uh, system software, user sub processes, user utilities and compilers. And all those things utilize uh, the hardware a hardware component like CPU, RAM, and storage. So the kernel is a core of the comp uh, core component of the, of any operating system, and uh, it uh, it actually used to interact with the with your hardware. System libraries is also known as uh, uh, you can say uh, that actually a second layer uh, on top of kernel, which actually interprets the user calls or system calls to kernel to hardware. So, uh, and then we have a layer of where we install system software, user processes, user utilities and compilers like GCC, PHP and everything. So this, this is the base for, uh, of Linux architecture. Uh, now we are moving towards the Linux directory structure. So Linux uh, directory structure, uh, Linux is actually a file-based operating system. Anything in the Linux is a file and a directory. So uh, Linux directory structure starts from the root, uh, which is actually uh, a slash path. Linux always start with the root. So under the root, root is the top level directory in Linux and all it's not uh, root, it's slash is the top level directory. We also called it the root path so it's not a root user it's just a path we call root means top of uh top of the line uh so under the root or slash we have several directories like like slash bin slash at c uh, slash home slash opd slash temp slash usr and slash war so we will discuss all those things uh step by step so uh starting with slash bin so under the slash bin, uh, Linux uh, always contains the binaries and the softwares uh, that actually uh, utilized by uh, users to operate the Linux operating system. Uh, like you can say SSH binaries, if config, LSS, LS commands, all those commands you can say. In other words, all those commands which actually capitalize the Linux utilization will reside under slash bin directory then we have a slash etsy directory slash etsy directory is uh, actually contains all the configuration related to the software related to the, the binaries uh, related to the, the tools commands and everything so all the configuration files natively went to the slash etsy directory then we have a slash home directory slash home directory where all the user data are going to be placed. Like if we create user and so all the user data for their home directory, for their documents, their movies, their everything related to the user, particular to user will go under under the home folder. Then we have a opt, uh, whenever we install, uh, according to the Linux architecture and the Linux principles, whenever we install third party software, we uh, Linux uh, uh, Linux suggests to install them in a uh, slash opt directory. It also uh, drive from the optionals. So uh, whatever the optional software we installed in Linux, we put them into the slash opt. Uh, then we have a directory called slash temp. So under the temp, 
we put all the temporary content like temporary files, temporary structure, uh, anything uh, which requires to be removed uh, at reboot or at any, uh, any point of time, or you can say anything that is not, uh, uh, not important to run your Linux operating system or your user processes we put into the slash temp directory. Then we have a slash USR. USR is actually uh, derived from universal. Uh, we put all the universal configuration, universal binaries. Universal means uh, a file or binaries or software or things that can be accessed by all of the users. So as uh, as with the name universal, uh, it already we already got the idea what actually that means. So that means if we uh, if we want to have anything uh, that actually requires to be accessed by others user, not only the root user, we put them in slash user. Uh, slash USR also has some subdirectory like slash USR bin, slash USR local, slash USR uh, log. So there are, there are various things. Uh, you know, that requires to be accessed by other users. Then we have a var slash var. Var is derived from various. Uh, so this directory particularly contains uh, mainly, mainly, or you can say mainly a known for the log directories, but it's not necessary. There are a lot of other things like uh, uh, documentation, logs, and uh, any other uh, that is uh, not necessary but requires by linux operating system we put them over here so various uh, contains all different uh, types of files like logs um, configuration uh, application data uh, and libraries data uh, so uh, all those content will go into the var so uh, we will see how we can install linux uh, so uh, I'm going to use because I have uh, uh, UTM. Uh, I have M, uh, silicon M1 chip, so I'm gonna use uh, UTM. Uh, you can use uh, virtual box, whatever the operating system. If you uh, you have, you can use uh, respective uh, virtualization software. So I'm gonna use uh, UTM, and I'm gonna install uh, Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu. Uh, ARM because M1 silicon does not support the Intel. So I'm gonna give for uh, 4 GB of RAM, 62 GB of uh, disk. So I, I don't want to share anything. So quickly go to I'm going to say this uh, one two machine, and I'm not gonna change anything because I already uh, selected by my own. So I'm just saving it. So I'm just starting that VM. So it will be starting. So we will install. Uh, we will. I'm using uh, Ubuntu 20 at the moment. So we are just gonna click on try install. It will take a while to load all the content from your local disk. So yeah, we, we uh, at the moment we, we need to choose the language. So we are choosing English. Now it's asking for uh, to get the downloads, but we will say continue without updating because we already have the latest OS. Uh, it was it it's at the moment it's asking for the keyboard layout. We are happy with the English US. Uh, we are not going to change. Uh, at this point of time, it says either you install the Ubuntu server or uh, Ubuntu minimize installation. We will go with a uh, customized installation because we need to see how advanced way we can install. So we will be choosing the advanced way of installation. Uh, so it gets the IP address. Uh, it's asking for proxy. Uh, I'm, I'm using my home network, so there is no proxy address. If you are working from your office, so you might need to ask your IT team to provide you the proxy address. At the moment, we don't have, so we are leaving it as a blank. So it's the mirror address from where it will download all the packages. So this is the point where we need to choose the disk uh, structure. 
So at the moment where we are saying uh, we need to use the advanced method to uh, create our partitions by our own. Uh, if, if we uh, choose the use entire disk, it will create uh, the structure uh, with uh, with Ubuntu specification. So we, we would like to go with our own. So uh, from the free space, if we uh, hit enter and we will see at the partition, uh, I, I want to create 10 GB uh, of my root partition. So there are several of uh, partition type like ext, ff, xfs, dtrfs. So at the moment for root, I, I'm choosing uh, ext4 and the mount points remain slash. Then uh, I will go with uh, another partition. Uh, I'll be saying, uh, choose 50 GB and then, oh, sorry, it's a boot. So I'll be saying uh, 1024, not 1024, let's do that 204 it, to create a two GB partition for slash boot. Uh, now, okay, there, there is a slight mistake, delete that partition. Uh, we will create uh, ext4. We'll be saying 0484. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. 50 GB. Uh, okay. We can we can say that sorry we can say that 2 gb for boot and from the free space we can say uh, for a home uh use we will say if 51 it will choose the whole uh, but before that we need to uh, create a swap partition as well so we'll be saying uh, 2 gb of swap partition and uh, and we will create the swap. Uh, now we have some more free space available. So we'll be saying 50, so it will automatically calculate. So this is, that is how, what we create. We create 10 GB of our root partition, 2 GB of our slash pool, 1 GB of EFI, because I have EFI system. And then we have a 48 GB of slash home and 2 GB of slash, uh, uh, swap. So uh, we are pretty much done with our partitioning uh we are saying uh, yes continue uh now at the moment it, it's asking for the username so i'm saying create mansoor and your server's name is the same uh, so it should be mansoor let's call it technotronics technotronics uh, pick a username, I'm saying Technoronix, password, I'm getting a very simple password at the moment. So at this place, we are saying, yes, install SSH, but we are not importing any, uh, any identity. Now, this is the moment where we can select our all uh, uh, packages that we require. So like if, if you want to install micro K, K ATS, AWS CLI, uh, any other packages that we require to install on, uh, on our machine, uh, either we, we, we can install the Docker, we can install the micro K8S, uh, etcd, so a mosquito, but we, we are not, we are just, uh, okay with installing, uh, AWS CLI at the moment, but you can choose your own software list of softwares. So it's installing, uh, once it is done. Uh, we can, we can, so it will take a while.
topic this is all done once it's done we will continue uh we will continue in the second video